Good morning, everyone. It's a beautiful morning in Wheat Ridge, Colorado, uh, where it's 5.30 in the morning. Oopsie, didn't know that when I set this up for 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. Um, I want to uh, spend a few minutes today talking to you about our um, kind of a big problem in healthcare leadership. How do we get our docs on board? If you're trying to have a transformation of your culture, if you're trying to just put change in place in, in your department or one of your departments and you need your docs to be on board with it, how do you do that? How do you do it? So we're going to spend a few minutes today talking about that. And of course, as I always do, I'm going to give you three big things to do, right? Three ways that, that you can get the docs on board. But first, I'd like to give a shout out, a couple of shout outs. We're spending January answering your questions, the fans of the framework. So don't be afraid to go on in there to, you know, give us your burning questions to answer in January because we love doing that. We love hearing from you and you guys have done a great job thus far. Heather Schrag, uh, this is your question that you posed. But you know what? Bless you, Heather, because I know everybody else has exactly the same question. And most likely, if you have it, everybody else uh, has the same question. So how do you get those docs on board? We're going to answer that in a, in a minute. Sue did a great job on Tuesday answering the question, how do you reignite, re-inspire, refresh, recommit to a change? Uh, to a cultural transformation, to something as big as an entire organization that's trying to change things. And she did, she did a great job explaining that, but I'd like to give a, a shout out um, to Southwest Health. I just had a call with them yesterday and they are doing their Journey 2.0 version and doing a recommitment and a refresh and re-inspire of their journey. And they've been very intentional about it. And so if you're out there watching from Southwest Health in Platteville, Wisconsin, make sure you catch Sue's live because she was talking all about you. And, uh, and if you guys haven't seen Sue's live video too, it was, it was great. Um, and it will give you some great tips on that. So uh, how do you get your docs on board with the change? Uh, you know, everywhere we go, we hear this. Everywhere we go. Every time we do a C-suite retreat and we say, what do you want to learn about next? Um, the, the, the answer will always be, how do I, how do I improve my phys physician relations? How to, uh, how do I engage the docs? How do I get the docs on board? And when Sue and I, you know, helped to lead the transformation at our hometown hospital, that was the biggest question that leaders asked us after we had been successfully transforming and getting these amazing over the top results. They said, how did you get your physicians to do all this? So uh, uh, we know a little bit about this, that's for sure. But I think one of the big questions about physicians is this. Are they your partner or are they your customer? And the answer is they are both. They, you know, and if you think about it, everyone that we work with on a day-to-day -day basis our employees, you know, if you're a servant leader, are both your customers and your partners in, in engaged in getting things done. So, you know, you, you have to think of them in both ways. And when I give you the three solutions to getting great results with your physicians and engaging them to be on the journey, you'll see what I mean by you have to consider them uh, both ways. So the problem with one of the problems with physicians, and I know there are many, okay, uh, but one of the problems with physicians is they are held um, to, the, to the, in the same light or the same view as leaders are in an organization. They are seen as informal or formal leaders, and yet they may not see themselves that way. So they may not hold themselves to the same actions and level of of behaviors that that leaders do but you need to know that you know you know especially if you're a new leader that when physicians misbehave when physicians don't get on board with what you're trying to do they you know they may blatantly say hey I know that uh, Maria Lena put on this this 
change that's going on in our department and you know she said we must do this but hey the docs aren't doing it and so there becomes this sort of apathy like nobody's holding them accountable and that sort of thing so one of the reasons why our physician relationships might be strained to begin with before you even try to engage them is because you just want them to behave you just want them to you know to go along with the change but remember what we do with our physicians is we put a lot of um, uh, to-dos on their list. We put a lot of change on them that usually they didn't ask for. None of them, you know, there wasn't a you know single physician alive, most likely, unless you know they were a millennial and Doogie Hauser and went to med school when they were 12, who came and said, I think that we should have an all electronic medical record and I'm gonna put in my own orders and I'm never gonna write another order again. You know, like all these things have been thrust upon them and they also don't communicate their frustrations very well. So guess what? You find that all of your relationships with physicians are reactive instead of proactive so we're going to talk about very proactive solutions to to engage them but you know remember that their behaviors are seen as bigger and under the microscope and you know just way you know people get really freaked out about things and so um you have that to deal with as a leader as well which might seem like your physician relationships are strained and frustrated uh because you you know obviously nobody controls their behavior so what do we do this um you know the first thing is you got to have a strategy and as sue and i like to say hope is not a strategy but what we find leaders saying even ceos we've had conversations with how are you going you know how are you going to involve physicians on your journey how are you going to communicate with them the transformation that your organization has undertaken and you know they literally have said to us you know what we hope they they come along we we hope that they agree this is a great idea because we didn't really involve them with it it's like perfect uh hope is not a strategy in fact hope even though it's a great positive word it's one of those four letter words when you talk about transforming your culture like good fine okay it's a four letter word you don't want to ever say again all right so great solutions Let's just do three. Ready? Ready? Ready for the first one? Guess what? It's rounding. It's building relationships. Uh, I worked for a great CEO. Most of you have heard about the good David. And, you know, his mantra was relationships, relationships, relationships. And when I would flop down in his office, when I was his CNO, and I would say, hey, you know, got this physician that's annoying the living crap out of me. He's not doing what he needs to do. He's never documenting his core measures. He's not, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, and I would whine. And he would say, hey, it sounds like you don't have a very good relationship with him. And in my inside gerbil voice was thinking, oh, of course, I don't have a good relationship with him. I don't even like him. And uh, my, you know, outside voice was, yeah, he could, I could probably spend some time getting to, you know, hear his frustrations. But here's the deal, people, especially if you are a leader of a subset of physicians, surgery, the birthing center, the intensive care unit, if you have hospitalists in your organization, if, you know, ED, um, EMS, I see you out there, Renee Gray, if, you know, you are an EMS provider, you round with those ED docs and, you know, find out, you know, what it is that you've been doing that irritate them or the ideas they have you know for very proactive change but rounding and building relationships with physicians is key it's a different set of questions than you use with your employees um, or even as a senior leader that you use with leaders different set of questions and I'd be glad to share them with you you post you know uh, as a result of my post today and I would be glad to send you those physician rounding questions because they're over the top uh, fabulous but what you're doing um, is you're building a relationship with physicians and you're hearing you know a they're great ideas and you get the opportunity when you're sitting down with them one-on-one -on -one. you didn't force them to come to a meeting 
that they didn't want to come to over their lunch hour. You, you know, you're listening to their concerns. And meanwhile, what you have an opportunity to do when you're rounding is guess what? You have an opportunity to sneak in the change to get their, their idea. And I, you know what? Hey, you know, from here on in, my nurses are going to be giving bedside shift report. They're going to be doing both an interdepartmental handoff and a shift to shift handoff. And during that time, you may walk in, doctor, when you're, you're doing your rounds because you're an early bird and you like to be there at 7 o'clock in the morning to do your rounds. And, you know, uh, I want to let you know that this is going on and it's really important. We'd love you to be a part of it, uh, but it's, it still needs to happen. And the, and the nurses have got six patients to give and, you know, report on. Uh, so we'd love you to be a part of it. So you may be able to, you know, sneak in those changes that you're trying to do or say, you know, hey, I, I see that you're really struggling with the documentation of this. Talk to me about this. How can we make this better for you? Right? How can we make this better for you? So rounding, building relationships. Um, when we were doing uh, some work in our days cash on hand, you know, believe it or not, rounding can help with a, with a, a, a finance goal. We were doing some work with Days Cash on Hand at our organization. And of course, your physicians have a huge amount of, of impact on how quickly they get their chart done, how quickly it gets, you know, to HIM and through the finance people. And, you know, in order for a bill to become a law, the documentation's got to be done, right? They've got to sign off on them. And so uh, the HIM leader came to me and said, your surgeons, okay, are, are the worst. They never come down to sign their charts. They're driving us crazy. We've made it so easy for them. All they have to do is key in into a room that's far, far away from their office and the operating room. And then, you know, they've got to get into a cupboard with their name on it. And, and then they've got to take down their 578 charts. And they've got, all they got to do is just put pen to paper and, you know, this before, you know, they could sign electronically. And I was like, dude, do you hear what you're saying? They've got to leave the operating room where they're doing 32 knee scopes and walk down there and double sign in and then go to their office where their work wife works. And, you know, how about, let me round on them. Let me see how this could be better. Every single one of the surgeons said to me, you know what? If only my cupboard was in the operating room, in the, in the lounge. If it was here, pff, I'd never be behind. Because guess what? During shift or during case turnover, I'm I'm right. I could sit down and, and do this, and we literally solved the problem overnight. Took a couple weeks to get the cupboards up, uh, you know. But you know what? The HIM staff loved bringing, you know. Oh, hey, it's a Dr. Wool every day. I'm there. I'll take his charts down to him. So you know, we never would have known the things that were frustrating our physicians and how we could make things right for them without. Uh, you know, rounding on them. So rounding is key. It absolutely is. Also, it has to be strategic. You've got to have a plan for it. You can't just, you know, rush the good physicians uh, all the time. So uh, that's that's important. Also, in the famous words of our, our great CEOs up in northern Wisconsin, uh, Luke Barrel and uh, Jason Douglas, one of the key things that they have found through physician rounding is who are your champions out there? Who are the people that can lead their peers on an initiative. So find physician champions, and you only do that by sitting down and finding out what they're, what they're passionate about. Is it safety? Is it quality? Is it timeliness? And or, you know, is it productivity? What's their buzz, right? What is their buzz? How can you proactively change that? So rounding, number one. Number two. Transparency equals trust. Communicating their results. How are they doing? You know, what I've found, uh, and when we look at our, our partner organizations, we, we look at, you know, the, the places where we go, is that we keep very careful track by physician of everything that physicians do, but we don't always do a great job communicating it to them. Uh, one of the things that really drove the results in our organization is being very transparent about each individual 
physicians' results, how they were doing on both, you know, from a patient engagement perspective, from an employee engagement perspective, from a quality perspective, from a finance productivity. And you know what? We were very fortunate. Our docs asked for that. They wanted to know, what are my results? Where do I stand? And we had to go to Prescani, who was our, our patient satisfaction uh, survey vendor at the time, and we had to say, we need our results by physician. And we need them in, you know, ascending to descending orders. And we had to teach the physicians, yes, chief of staff, chief of medicine, uh, being in the first percentile does um, not mean that you're number one in the country. Okay, dude, it means you suck. Um, so, you know, we had to train them what those results meant. But I know, especially for you leaders out there that have a, a certain subset of physicians, what gets monitored and measured gets improved. If you post the results in the operating room, if you're a surgery leader of physician turnaround uh, time, case start times, you know, you don't have to, you know, maybe there's specific reasons why certain physicians have an infection rate and you're working with them on that. Maybe you don't want to post something like that. But when you're trying to improve things like your productivities and your efficiencies and, you know, your rates uh, of something, you post it by, you know, physician, okay? And they're going to be like, oh, dude. People, I don't want to be last next week. Let's go, all right? They're going to be involved. They're going to look up from their cell phone in between cases and say, let's let's go here, people, okay? So I want to be a part of a winning team. People hate to be a loser, all right? So I want to be a part of a, win, a winning team. Number three, train. Train, train, train. Again, this is where hope is not a strategy. What kills me is when we expect our physician community, you know, those HCAP scores with the physician component in them, physician communication scores. You know, I'll ask nursing leaders um, and senior leaders, what have you done to, imp you know, to increase the physician communication scores? And this is where I get the hope word, right? This is where hope comes in. Oh, we really hope that they see, you know, how great nurse communication is and all the changes we've made with the nursing bundle. Maybe we should create a physician bundle. Susie, I see you're watching. That's a great idea. But, you know, the, you know, we see all these great changes that are that are, that are going on with the nursing bundle and nursing communication is way up. Where's physician communication? Where are, you know, where is your, you know, physician scores? So, uh, and we hope that they get better and we hope that the physicians realize that they need to do something. No, don't leave them out of training. Don't leave them out of, you know, the, the validation that needs to be done. Don't, you know, in optional and insufficient training equals optional and insufficient results, okay? So you, you have to train physicians maybe a different way than you train your staff on patient engagement um, on being a great leader because they probably lead people in their offices that, you know, physician practices that you own. So maybe you've, you've got to do specific training. And the physician training may not be the same as you do for your employee training. But don't leave physician training out. Um, I'll never forget when we started being very transparent about how our, the what the patient voice was saying specifically about each one of our physicians. And um, I was rounding with a cardiologist and I was teaching him, if you sit down and listen to the patient, just that act of sitting down, doctor, find a clean space in the room, sit down, listen, lean forward, touch the patient for more than six seconds. And before you leave, make sure you say, you know, is there anything else I can do for you? I'll be back tomorrow about the same time to round on you. The nurses are going to take great care of you today. Teach them how to manage up. Teach them how to provide service recovery. Two big things you want to teach your physicians. But most importantly, just being physically present and mindful during a patient interaction really improves their scores. So I, w I was rounding with this physician and I was teaching him how to do this and coaching him in between. Cardiologist, right? So 
he had never really, other than, you know, putting his stethoscope on a, on a chest, did much in the way of touching patients. And so I was teaching him to be warm and friendly and shake hands and, you know, whatever. And um, I had to say to him at the end of, of each patient, um, doctor, you didn't wash your hands. So he's like, you're always yelling at me that I have to touch people. Now you want me to wash my hands? Anyway, so don't be, ex don't expect your physicians to, you know, the physician training to not be rocky, but we have found uh, that they love it when you include them in physician training. So there are, those are my three biggies. I hope they work for you. I'd love to hear about it uh, when you begin, or please share any great physician engagement tactics that uh, you have. Maybe I left off. We have a lot of solutions for engaging physicians and uh, we'd love to share them with you. So a couple of reminders, all right? Um, next week's live question from Jane Ann is, I'm gonna answer Karen Stockton's question that she posted. You know, what do I do about nursing leaders that are stretched? We have to do, do more with less. We have competing priorities and, you know, nursing leaders kind of feel like they're, you know, swirling the drain all the time. You know, not just nursing leaders, all leaders in healthcare feel like they're swirling the drain all the time because they're being stretched too thin in all different uh, directions. So they never feel like they do any one thing well. We're going to talk about that next week on live. Meanwhile, uh, our nurse core, nurse, nursing, uh, nursing leader greatness cohort starts January 17th. We'd love to see you in it. Um, if you, you know, just go to our website, it's right on the homepage, www.capstoneleadership.net. And if you are struggling, uh, with physician engagement, engagement, patient, employee, and you think that you may need a transformational journey, reach out to us. We would, we would love to talk. And we have complimentary phone calls that you can also access from our website. Have a good day, guys.